So now that we've done absolutely everything, the final hurdle between you having your finished track and everybody in the world hearing your masterpiece is, of course, exporting it. Now, you wouldn't expect everybody in the world to have a copy of Reaper and all of your plugins. So we need to make sure that we get out a single audio file. There are a few different things that we need to look at to make sure that we get Reaper to do exactly what we want to when we export. And the most important thing is to think about what happens at the end of our file. If we look over here and zoom in on our final outro, in this one, what you can hear is that we've got some tailing out of our effect. And in order to make sure that Reaper catches that tailing out of the effect, we need to either increase the length of our MIDI clip so that we've got just enough emptiness to cover, if you like, the tailing out, or we need to make sure that when we select time, because we can either select our entire project or we can select just a time thing, that we've got enough time at the end to be able to get that tailing out. If you don't want to have a single end note, so to speak, then you can use uh, the master channel to fade things out. And doing that is just the same as automating anything else. We just need to automate it like so. To make sure that you can see the master channel, all you need to do is make sure that when you right click down here, show master track is enabled. And with all of that taken care of, we can just go to File, go to Render, and here we are. Now we can render our master mix, i.e. everything as one audio file. We can also render stems, which is individual channels that will allow us to send all of those channels to perhaps a uh, professional studio so that they can load each of those individual channels up and uh, continue with the project from their end without having to have your exact Reaper project, or we can do both. And uh, we're just going to do our master mix for now. We can also render the entire project, i.e. the point from the very, very beginning of the track all the way up to the last sound, either the last MIDI clip or the last audio clip. But importantly, it will stop at that MIDI or audio clip, which is why we talked about adding that extra blank space for any tails of effects. Then we come down to our output directory, um, which is fairly self-explanatory. And then we've got our options. Now at the moment I'm on MP3, if I come to WAV, what we can do is see our sample rate for export. And we probably want to always leave this on 44.1 kilohertz because 44.1 is pretty much the standard for recorded audio to be distributed in. So if we change that, we're going to run into compatibility issues with uh, other software and hardware, be it for listening on. Um, but similarly, if you've got a very specific need, you might want to increase the sample rate. 99% of the time, for 99% of people, you'll just want to use 44 point one or 44,100 hertz and of course stereo is uh, always good as long as we want our stereo file of course and then here we've got this drop down and we can select to either online render which means that the track will play and it will record as it plays there's one speed offline which means that the track won't play but it will record at the same time as it would take to play the track. And then there's full speed offline. And full speed offline just lets Reaper power through the track as quickly as it possibly can to get it rendered. Now, you might save a few minutes here and there with uh, full speed rendering, but there is the potential for the occasional hiccup because of course, plugins are pretty much designed to be able to um, play in real time. If you do encounter any issues with uh, an exported file, it's quite likely down to the fact that full speed offline is uh, confusing and upsetting a particular plugin. So if we go to one speed offline, we kind of sidestep any potential issues. 
Now we've got resample mode. Now, it will depend on how powerful your computer is, but there's really no point in doing anything less than extreme resampling. If you've got lots and lots of different sample rates in your audio uh, project, or you're exporting to a different sample rate from 44.1 compared to what you've got in your project, you're going to need to resample. And resampling is a, a, <laughs> a perfect way to uh, destroy the fidelity of your track. We've looked at um, Bitcrusher plugins before, and what uh, Reaper is going to essentially try and do here is change the bit rate or the bit depth and the sample rate without creating any of those artifacts that we use for creative effect in our Bitcrusher plugin. If you try this and you have been using for whatever reason, you probably won't have used any uh, different sample rates, but if you have, and this looks like it's going to take two or three days, then the likelihood is you'll be fine with good and it will be much quicker. But for the majority of you, you can pretty much leave this alone. Now we can see here, we can master mix dither and noise shape. Now I've got these turned on because we're going to save as a CD quality WAV, which is 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bit bit depth. You'll remember from our bit crusher tutorial, what happens when we dither and noise shape, it's looking at adding that tiny, tiny, tiny amount of noise to the signal so that things glue together. And you can try the effects of dithering on and off, but the likelihood is that if you are exporting to 16-bit WAV with 44.1 kilohertz sample rate, dithering and noise shaping are going to make your track sound ever so slightly better. So turn them on. Now, down here, we're exporting to 16-bit PCM WAV. What that means is that really we're going to get a file that is directly compatible with uh, CD authoring. Majority of the distributed music for the past 30 odd years has been 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bit. So if you export in this format, you're going to get CD quality. If you export in 24 bit or even 32 bit and you can see here where it says fp it means floating point you're going to get potentially better quality audio but you're also going to run into the issue that there's going to be far less that's compatible with that audio so the point of uh, 16 bit pcm and 44.1 kilohertz is that you get the quality sort of available to you that CD uses. So this is the sample rate and bit depth that you'll want to use. Now you can pretty much ignore these little bits and bobs because as we spoke about right at the beginning, Reaper is many things to many people. And for us who make music, we don't need to worry too much about our Bex chunks and large files to use Wave64 because that's not going to really happen to us. All we need to do now is come down to render one file and when we click on it it's going to ask us if I want to overwrite something that I've already done or whether I want to increment the file name and if I do that it's just going to add one to the end so I'll do that and this is now at one speed real time just going through and recording our track to a file now we don't need to sit here and wait for this to finish. Let's just cancel that and just take one last look at the other file type we might want to use. And that would be MP3. Now, if you've not uh, heard of MP3, if you've been in a cave for the last uh, 15 years or so, MP3 is a file format that essentially compresses audio down, but not compression in the way that we've thought about it as um, our creative effects or technical effects, it's compressing the file size. Now compressing that file size needs lots and lots of trickery. And when MP3 first came out, 
there was a lot more that we needed to worry about when it came to um, the compromise between file size and quality. Because the more data that we take away from a file, the more compromise there has to be in how good that file is going to end up sounding. But now, fast forward to uh, this new glorious broadband era, the two things that the uh, lower bitrate MP3s used to be good at um, facilitating, which was slow internet speeds and small storage spaces, are pretty much a thing of the past. So 99% of the time, a 320 kilobit, which is our absolute best we can do, is what we're going to want to export our MP3 as. Now, 320 kilobit is so close to WAV that most people can't tell any difference, even if you put the two up next to each other. And it's about a quarter the size of a WAV. It's about 2.5 megabytes per minute, as opposed to 10 megabytes per minute for WAV. So when we export to uh, MP3, we want to use 320 kilobit per second of audio data, or no, file data. And as you can see here, it says that maximum bitrate quality. If we went to constant bitrate, we'd be able to choose all of our different qualities. We could also do variable bitrate, which is VBR, which would allow us to um, change on the fly which could theoretically reduce the file size because when there's not a lot going on, there could potentially be lots compressed out of it. But it's all much of a muchness when you consider the fact that we're living in a time where we're not too worried about how long an MP3 takes to download and we're not worried about how much space we've got on our hard drive or our MP3 player to store it. It's always better to export 320 kilobits per second. So, Doing that, all we need to do is render. Now, you will need to download the LAME, which is the uh, the ultimate uh, project, if you like, um, of uh, the compression algorithms to make MP3 separately, and the details, as always, are below, because Reaper can't distribute it without running into issues, but it's all free, so don't worry about it. Once you've done that, then you can just press render and once again, increment file name and it's exactly the same process. That is now pretty much it. I'm excited for you. Um, we have gone from absolutely no idea about music production software all the way up to the point where we're exporting a track that's got multiple channels, it's got EQs, it's got levels, it's got effects over it, we've got mastering effects, and now you're at the point where you can share it with the world. So we've just got a few more notes that you'll see, and it's just quick links to where and how you can share your music for everybody to hear. But thank you so much for uh, being part of this course. I really hope that you've learned absolutely loads and you've enjoyed learning loads and we would absolutely love to hear the music that you've made in the course of all of this learning. So thanks very much guys from me Chris and all at odragdigital.com and uh, all the best hopefully we will hear you at number one soon.